We want to start, first of all, we know uh, a lot of you are going to be calling, but before we get to some of your calls, first of all, for those people, Dr. Wang, who have no idea what LASIK surgery is, um, because there is such a buzzword about having your eyes lasered, um, what exactly is LASIK? Because I know it stands for a very long couple of words. Um, First of all, Amy, I'd like to uh, thank Channel 5 as well as um, my patient, John, mm-hmm. and uh, Michael for coming over. I think it's an important opportunity for us to give us some information about the surgery. And I'm going to spend just the next two minutes to describe briefly the principle of this procedure. So we're going to look at the uh, enlarged photo of... Um, we need to pull up the picture. The, there it is. Yes. And uh, this is a picture of an eyeball in which, as you see, the image of a stop sign is projected onto the cornea and focused in the back of the eye, the retina. However, the image is focused slightly anterior in front of the retina, resulting in the blurred image. This is a common condition called nearsightedness or myopia. In such patients, traditionally we correct condition by placing a optic device such as glasses and contact lens in front. However, in this procedure, as you see in this second foot, uh, image, a laser light, which is represented by this yellow green colored column, is used to directly reshape the front part of the eye, the cornea, into the shape of contact lenses. Mm-hmm. So it's like wearing a permanently wearing a contact lens without wearing one. So and that's a fundamental solution to this vision problem. Now, it's my understanding you have performed more than 3,000 consecutive successful, it's important to note that, LASIK procedures without an intraoperative flap complication. Um, I know from doing stories, hearing about the flap and how you create a flap to go in and laser out the excess um, microscopic layers of tissue, right? right? Can Mm -hmm. you expand more on that and how important it is as, as you're doing this? Obviously, you're working in a very, very small area and it's done very, very quickly. That's right. And for some people, I know they shudder when they hear about a laser touching their (laughs) eye. So tell us about what exactly you are doing and what you're creating. Amy, you're absolutely right in terms of this is still a surgery. As all surgery goes in medicine, still has its potential risk and complications. And um, it's a highly precise surgery in that the accuracy of the laser is um, one hundredth of width of one strand of hair. So just imagine yourself take one strand of hair and have to split into one hundred little strands and we cannot miss by those little tiny strands. So needless to say, as you mentioned, that it is very important that any patients who are concern, who is considering for the surgery uh, to do the right homework to figure out three pr- principal things, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Number one, if you're indeed a good candidate, that's patient selection. Number two is, do, are you being operated in the facility with state-of-art technology? Mm-hmm instrumentation. And uh, third is surgeon's expertise or experience. So once again, patient selection, instrumentation, and surgeon's qualification. And these three are most important cornerstones uh, that every single LASIK patient should know before they consider surgery. Mm -hmm. Who are the best candidates? Here we have John and Michael. I'd like to hear more about their cases. And who are the best candidates? In some of my reading, I've found that you're you're looking for people with moderately distorted vision. Is that... That's correct, Amy. Someone who would be eligible. Yes, um, that's the cornerstone number one, which is patient selection. Um, typically, the a ideal patient consisting uh, consists of the following profiles. Number one, you have to be at least 18 years of age. Uh, number two, you have to have healthy eye conditions. Mm-hmm. That means no significant eye problems such as trauma, macular degeneration, or glaucoma, things like that. And uh, number three, you have to have an thorough eye examination that demonstrate that your eye can be correctly shaped. 
And number four, as Amy, you correctly pointed out, the range of nearsightedness has to be what we call moderate, meaning approximately minus 1.5 to minus 2 diopters, that's low degree of nearsightedness, to probably minus 10, minus 12 or so in the higher end. Mm -hmm. And it's important that patients who are considering LASIK today are within this what I call ideal range in order to have ideal result. Do you see some patients that um, maybe they wouldn't have been the best candidates and it has there have been some side effects, um, you know, some negative effects from the surgery that you end up fixing? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, um, that we run a very busy clinic. What kind of problems did you run into, Michael? Uh, why did you decide to start with, why did you decide to have your initial LASIK procedure done? I don't know how long ago you had the first one done. Well, actually, four years ago, it was a PRK surgery, which was prior to the LASIK surgery as time and technology is advanced. Tell people what PRK is for those Well, who don't I have know. to ask. Well, the photorefractive? Yes, photorefractive, which is the forerunner of LASIK okay. surgery. And this procedure was uh, more complicated than the LASIK surgery, and the mine didn't turn out properly and two of the points that Dr. Wang mentioned is the technology of the equipment and the expertise of the doctor. I depended more on the equipment than I did the expertise of the doctor mm -hmm. and I was hoping one would overcome the other and it didn't. What kind of problems did you have after the procedure was done? Well the healing process of my eye left a scar tissue mm -hmm. And it's sort of comparable to holding a cellophane over your eye. Mm -hmm. And it was a haze there, and I couldn't see through it. I couldn't use a corrective lens or anything to fix that. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this went on four years, and back and forth to different mm -hmm. ophthalmologists. And, and finally, I ran into an ophthalmologist that knew Dr. Wayne's procedures and his technology and his results mm -hmm. and he referred me to him. And so how were you able to, did you actually reverse what had been done? Because once you've lasered something away, that's gone, but what, how did you fix it? That's correct. We first saw Michael in the beginning, of, um, actually, what month did we see you last time? The first time we saw you. The first time was January of 2000. That's right, January. And uh, he had, as Michael related, a significant scar reaction to this laser procedure. And Amy, you're right, this procedure is irreversible. Mm -hmm. Once one had a procedure, uh, it's done. You cannot be undone. However, with complications such as scarring, uh, one with the right instrument and expertise may be, cor be able to correct it by removing the scar. And we had several consultations with Michael and uh, he and I sat down and talked about this. And it was already not a very good situation because he had compromised the vision with scarring. However, I relate to Michael that I feel relatively confident that with the experience that we have had, that we, were able, we will be able to help him. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Michael, we have to design a, uh, what we call a tailored treatment for Michael um, based on removing the scar as the first step and second to correct the refractive or eye changes due to the scar itself. And uh, uh, as I relate to you early on, the second cornerstone is instrumentation. It is very important for this procedure to not only know the eyeball, but as well as the instrument, the machine. And um, we were very fortunate to be able to understand the machine to in its various details and being able to program it and configure it to treat Michael's condition. And we removed the scar, I believe it was in February. Right. And um, then we were able to successfully uh, do the second planned procedure, which is to correct the consequence of eye changes due to the scar. Did you have immediate results? I mean, did you find that right after that your vision was improved, or did it, did it take a while for that for you to see the effects? Actually, it was 24 hours. I live in West Tennessee near Jackson, and I was able to drive the full distance over here the very next morning, and could see 2020 on his. Uh, hmm. Examination. Wow, the blurring, the haziness was gone. It's gone. Mm. 
That must have been qu quite a difference, well, quite a relief wow. after um, and it's struggling. And it's been 90 days today is, uh, since the LASIK surgery was done.